Hi everyone, my name is Filippo Cinotti. I'm a cinematographer and a colorist from Italy. And today I want to talk to you why I love that much look designer and grain lab and why I'm using those plugins that much in my color grading pipeline inside DaVinci Resolve. With no further, let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve. So guys, there we are inside DaVinci Resolve. Today we're gonna work uh, at some clips from a project we are shooting from Fred Perry. I just took a few clips from the official timeline, different camera angles, uh, different shot from different cameras, even a DJI inspired to drone footage. And before talking about the software itself, I just want to talk about how I managed uh, my note tree and I managed this project itself. So if you don't have like 10,000 cuts inside your project, you will love to work in scene referred. And it's crucial to work in this way, like I'm doing right now, because it will give you tons of control inside the algorithmic color space. So I'm just starting my project with an ADT. So I'm starting by converting my Canon uh, log image into an Ari log C and I explain you why I'm doing this and why we're working inside our Ari log C uh, color space. So in that way, I'm Ari log C. I have primaries and dodge and burning options right now that I can or cannot do if I if needed. Then we got our show lot corrector and into this show lot, basically what I'm doing, I'm preserving um, the log C color space and I'm applying a negative inside it. And then on our timeline, based on all our clips, I got an ODT and grain lab. And actually grain lab is applying grain to my image. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that in the end. And my ODT is just transforming my Arialog C into Rec 709. So into this ODT, I'm actually giving printing option. And in this case, I choose the Cutavision Color Print 2383, a really common one. And the contrast option stands on the 2383. You might ask, why am I doing those three steps? So it's really simple. Let's start saying that wood designer is made like a film processing used to be. And you might say how it used to be. So normally you will shot on a negative and the negative itself should stay untouched. So it was inside the camera and you will pick that and put it into printing machine. Then into printing machine, there will be a scanner. And the scanner itself, it's simulated with our ODT right there with our printing options. And this thing right here gives that final touch to the look and it condenses the color space, it make it crunchier, it make cooler to RC and you know, it finalized everything in the same way. And it's crucial to maintain those steps. And again, you might ask, why are we working into Arilog C? Because it is exactly identical to how film used to be. It preserves our mid grays, it preserves our skin tones as natural as these are supposed to be. And it is actually the best color space when we are coming into emulating films. A crucial thing to say is that most of the people think that the look itself is here, in, into the negative option. I'm saying this even because we got plugins like Film Convert that only have this negative option thing, and that's not actually how film um, would work or a film processing would work. You need a printing option and you need that incredible thing that we got here that is called subtractive color. I'm gonna talk about that. To. So after having choose your negative and having put this here, in this case the Kodak uh, 5219 Vision 3 500T, we will go inside our ODT, so inside our printing option, and we will select our contrast and our print stock. So the contrast option, again, are in fact based on printing decisions. So you should have an S2 that actually uh, ask here or what a rec 709 normally will do all this after different films and then we got fuji and kodak emulation and then we got film stocks themselves so we got the most famous one the 2383 the most common used then we got the one designed by peter doyle for uh, the lord of the rings and that's a really cool thing to know 
and that regard our post processing that actually is you know the final touch to our post processing pipeline taking everything that we are doing with FPE that actually stand for film print emulation and with that without crashing you know saturation without breaking everything we can choose the intensity of that post processing so the intensity of that printing without breaking anything we will also have an on air that stands for the uh, the three names from the engineers that work with Vittorio Storaro uh, for the creation of this process that it's actually the original bleach bypass process and also we got a really new thing or better a new thing in the way of working inside a pipeline that actually is the uh, subtractive color and that's a really innovative and great thing to have to work with subtractive color is crucial to understand how it were in real life so normal normally a beam of light would have touched our film and it would have processed our three layers of colors cyan magenta and yellow in the same exact way but actually we can like make few differentiation one from the other we can create like our custom uh, develop of our film emulation and we can create with this subtractive color unique representation of the film of the negative that we uh, decide to work with and the cool thing about that is that we are actually working with real film scans and we're actually sub using the subtractive methodology um, and just customizing a uh, real film emulation. And that's a really cool thing that nobody got inside uh, their, their software. It's crucial to say that if we want to work into this way, we want to have, to have uh, our three layers in the same way to make it affect our image, we have to push or pull one or the other in a way or another just to create our custom look and then we can just push or pull our correction or better our look in one way or another working like an offset you know then also it doesn't you know over here we also got temperature it's not kind of the way you are thinking so normally th this is not like tweaking the temperature right there. This is about thinking a temperature at the lamp itself that it's developing the film. So normally a uh, lamp that were developed film will have been like D60, not a D65. So we would love in terms of looks to, to change it in a colder or warmer way, depending on how we want to like affect um, this subtractive color and the negative itself if we want so this is another option that other software doesn't give us and if you want on your show lot if you want to tweak few things customizing that negative you also uh, have lift gamma and gain right there without touching the one that da vinci uh, gives you we also have the gamut limit if your image would have you know uh, gamut issues on your colors and you can just set your limit right there and just be accurate um, for your scopes and being accurate uh, for your colors so in this way actually we are converting our image keeping our main correction for the image for primaries and dozen burning with our show let, we are choosing the negative and just giving that touch that we are choosing. And then with the ODT, we are actually giving that print, that look, that finalization into our project that will stay for all our clips. So as you can see, into this way, I have a really simple pipeline where I'm creating the look on my show let and I'm giving that final touch in the ODT. And I'm preserving everything that I'm doing into my timeline on the ODT and what I have to change right here is just maybe a few tweaks on my primaries uh, I can make some dodge and burning if needed if I want to make it and that's it really simple and really powerful and what I'm why I'm saying that it's because you have your look inside that choose of the negative and of the printing obviously 
So by combining those things all together, you are creating a really stunning look that it's really working like film into an area log uh, color space. But it's not over there. Sometimes some of you might say, okay, working with films might be cool, but what if I don't want to work with films and I just want to have like a classic touch to my image without having those Kodak-like blues or yellows or reds. That's really simple. Um, Look Designer got a thing also for, uh, for this. So on the negative option, we got a few options that are major and minor, two options that are major and minor. First time I saw those, I, would, I was like, what hell are those? What are supposed to be? Um, that's really simple. Everything it's based on color harmony and how color really affects and how define ourselves into an epi or more serious or depressing way. And it's all related on, on music. So we want to go there on negative stock and it got major and minor. One thing that you gotta know is that major chords in music are like related to uh, real chords. So if we just want to go into minor and just decide one of those chords, you will see that everything will become really, you know, really cold and really kind of serious and into a mood actually that it's not happy at all. But if we tweak this into major, as you can see, all those chords are pretty okay, happy and working well. Actually, I think that this clip, it's a bit of balance, just a touch here. And as you can see, by, you know, tweaking those major right here, we are just giving to our humans warmer tones and happier tones and everything is more poppy, everything is working in a better way. So not just film stocks, but we also have those negatives that are working in a, you know, saturated and a, I might say in a happier way that are not actually related to Kodak or Fuji or whatever film stock you will normally use. As a final touch, I will go on the timeline and on Grain Lab, I will apply my custom grain. In this case, I just applied on 709 um, output transformation, a Kodak 8mm, because I want to have a really strong grain on my image. And you can also tweak that 4K if your image is in 4K and you want to upscale that grain and adapt it to your image. You also have the intensity of the spark, the body and the base and that's a really great thing and it's really simple as it seemed but super powerful in my opinion and it's one of the best grain elaboration software that I saw uh, so far and I'm really happy about it. And so as you can see it's really simple to work on a really you know condensed node tree inside um, the Vintresol with Look Designer. You don't need, you know, too many things, too many nodes. As said, if you just need to make a window, if you just need to tweak something around, just create your dodge and burning, your primaries, and with this you can mess around with your parallels, with your correctors, but everything stands on my show lot and on my ADT. So the big work on the look, you know, it's made there. I also make uh, the show out as a shared node to, you know, change everything in the same way on all my clips. As you can see, you don't need too much when you have a plugin that is working like film. Even because normally you want to be as natural as possible and as, you know, closer as possible to what the production and the P choose for the color of, of your movie. And when you're going to create a look from zero without using a plugin, you're actually going into a direction on another in terms of color. And by using this plugin, you can do the exact same thing inside it with that extra thing that is using negatives that actually comes from films. And, you know, working on 
you know, the actual film itself with the subtractive color method that it's really powerful and really cool, creating a stunning grade and above all unique grades that a lot can give to you or a preset can give to you. So I'm really in love with Look Designer, take a look to it, and I will really appreciate if you would like to leave a feedback in the comment section. And if you're still spending hours around the web searching for the life-changing tutorial, be known that the only thing you need to learn is how to craft a methodical and properly craft working path. I made two color grading masks, one thing for beginner and one for expert colorists. In these two masks, I compressed 10 years of on-ground experience into more than 25 hours of video content. If you want to level up your color grading skills, check the link below. Until the next time, be brave and make it better.